everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video so um, in response to the airbrush question or to the airbrush in that recent video uh, some discussions came up from MC1 gamer about bones figures and things like that and priming and I've never really primed my bone any bones figs with an airbrush because the last time I was painting bones figures was when I was still using rattle cans and so I thought hey let's find out whether or not it works so I grabbed this guy this is one of their spooky ghosts He's actually like translucent, but it's still the same, basically, bones material. Um, he's already been like cleaned off and whatnot. Um, so we're going to give him a prime. And at the same time, we're going to use this to show some neat tricks about zenithal highlighting and what we can do and things like that. Now, fair word of warning, I'm going to run my airbrush here while I'm talking. Hopefully it all comes through okay. So I've got my airbrush here ready to go. Um, and... We're going to walk through the entire process. So I've got the little bones fig. He's been washed. He's ready to rock. And I'm going to start by putting just a drop or two of thinner down in there. And then we're going to prime it first with some German gray, which is a very gray black. I like this as a primer uh, when you're airbrush priming. When you're rattle can priming, I tend to use whatever color is closest to the mini I want to do because you have less control. With this, since I do oops, since I do everything in Zenithal, uh, it doesn't really matter what color we start at. So I've got my primer down in there. You can see I didn't put much in. That's maybe like four drops. I'm just going to plug the end just very lightly. I'm going to put my finger to the end. I, there's The needle is down in there, so you want to be careful with this. And I'm just going to, you can see what's happening in there. It's like bubbling up because I'm going to mix that thinner in there. I'm shake it up. Blow some of those bubbles away. The first thing we do is we always spray it over here on our paper. To make sure we're getting a nice, even, clean spray. I even then just do a quick line down my thumb. And so we got that ready to go. Now let's just give him a prime. And we're gonna, he's all translucent normally, but we're gonna do a new ghost effect. We can do better than this. So. We're just gonna go ahead and shoot the whole miniature here. Oh, I really, I'm not doing that in frame, I'm sorry. So here we go. We're going to just shoot the whole miniature with the, uh, the airbrush. So it's funny to try to watch this because this is my airbrush booth is not in my normal painting area. So I have to like look over at my screen. So I apologize if anything isn't in frame for just a moment. Certainly not my intention. You're also looking at a funny angle compared to how I'm looking at it. So I bet you see a very different color than I do. All right. So we're going to go ahead and keep priming this guy. Just priming away. You can see we're really not harming any of the detail there, right? Like, this guy's a pretty detailed little fig with his cloak uh, folds or whatnot, like in this area. And they're all pretty much staying completely clean and clear, and that's why we airbrush prime. Because the amount of detail we preserve is just amazing compared to what you get out of a rattle can. You lose nothing. Now, when you're priming with an airbrush, um, I like to do at least two solid primes, so I kind of wait. You can always just, I'm pressing down the trigger right now, but I'm not putting any paint through. So we can always just kind of accelerate our drying a little by just blowing some air over the fig. And we're just going to go over him again. Just kind of burn through what little primer we've got left. Now, an important part about airbrushing and priming in general is you only, unlike a normal sort of rattle can, which really sprays hard and gets a lot of paint everywhere. You really only get paint where you point, right? And so if there's an angle that you're not pointed at, you're not going to get paint there. So if I didn't turn this guy over and spray underneath, there wouldn't be paint here. So when you're priming with an airbrush, you really want to make sure you're flipping the model around, you're spraying at different angles, that you're covering everything. We don't want to come back to this later and find that we missed a spot. I'll also say it's kind of less important if you're doing like GW miniatures if you don't get it perfect. In honesty, in that case, it really doesn't matter. Normal paint will pretty much stick to uh, to GW plastic, uh, even without too much priming. I still prime everything, but it'll still stick fairly well. So there we go. None left, you can see there. So now we're just going to clean the, the airbrush real quick. How am I going to do that? We're going to take our... This is my I water primer that I, or airbrush cleaner, I'm sorry, 
that I mixed about 50 or 60 percent in here, filled the rest up with water, or I should say everything but 10 percent, and then put in 10 percent Windex. And that's all that is. It's pretty easy. You can buy big bottles of that stuff pretty cheap, and because you're using it at most about half of it at a time, I just buy it in big bulk bottles and then mix it into that smaller one, fill up half that bottle with the, uh, the actual airbrush cleaner, let's say 40% water and 10% Windex. I mean, it's not an exact mix. Obviously, I'm not sitting there with measuring cups. I'm just filling it and eyeballing it. So then when I clean it, I put some of the, the cleaner in there, and then I'm going to, again, just cover my tip. Actually, pull back just a little, and you can see it bubbles. And that gets that paint out of there, out of inside. And then I take it over to my cleaning station, and I just blow all that out. Now, if you don't, like, have the little Iwata cleaning station or something, which I do highly recommend, it's the best 10 or $12 purchase or something. It's actually pretty cheap. You're going to make in your airbrushing career because you'll use it forever. It's, you know, a one-time thing. You'll never need to buy another one. It's a place to rest your airbrush where it's safe. It's not going to fall. Um, it's totally worth it. So, as you can see, we've primed this guy. He's nice and black. While I'm talking, he's drying. I don't really let these things dry a long time. I don't care that much. It's fine. Like, that's close enough. If you prime in very thinned layers, you blow them over with a little bit of air and such, he'll, he'll be dry. So, to continue our zenithal, we're going to go to a gray. And for the next layer, we're going to use some game air cold gray. It's kind of a, it, ironically, despite the name, it's actually somewhat of a warm gray because it has a bit of a brown tone to it. So, funny that they named it that, but it doesn't actually have any blue or ice in it or anything like that that would make it cold. So I'm just going to put three little drops in there along with a dr another drop of thinner. So there we go. You can see down in there. Same thing. Just going to cover the end there. We spray on our paper to make sure we get a nice, even, clean gray. Quick run down the thumb. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this mini, and at a 45-degree angle to the miniature, I'm going to spray him. Okay? So... Basically, if he's sitting flush, I'm at this angle right here. Not straight down on his head, and not straight ahead at him. We want to get it 45 degrees, right in the middle there, okay? And the reason we're doing that is because the airbrush, as I said, is very directional. So it's going to create this shading naturally just by doing this. And what we're doing here is creating our mid-tone. This is also mapping how we're going to highlight. Now, because this is a ghost, and he's kind of all one color anyways... Um, there's, it, we're actually going to be able to more or less do this whole thing with an airbrush. Um, just because he's all one thing. He doesn't have a lot of other stuff to him. So there you go, it's just that easy. So when I spray him, now if we get a good look at him, you can see the color variation. And if I turn him like that, he still looks pretty black. But if I turn him like this, he looks pretty gray. Right? So we can see the difference there. And that's what we've created by being directional like that. If you're not quite happy with it, if you want to lighten them up a little more, you can always just spray a little more in there. Again, the key is just to keep that angle. So always be working in that angle. If you've got a part you feel that should be really bright, you know, like the head or the tip of a sword or something, you can really focus up there. Maybe we want to work a little more toward the tips of his robe. We want the tips of his robe to be a little brighter. We can do that. All right, so now we're just going to spray out the rest of our paint. I've got a little bit left in here. I didn't quite nail it. Now... When I spray it out, I just spray it onto this card I keep here. I do not rock the trigger all the way back, okay? So I only rock the trigger back about halfway. Don't just pull it back and eject the paint from your paint cup. There's no reason to do that. What you do there is you risk getting paint up in the tip and stuff like that. There's just, there's almost no reason to ever open the throttle all the way on your, your, um, on your airbrush unless you're cleaning. So when you're blowing out your paint into your cleaning station or something like that, sure, you can rock the trigger back all the way. Uh, but then you always want to check the tip afterward to make sure that there's no paint that gathered up in there, because it can happen. And if it does, you just want to get that out of there. Keep a little cloth next to your station, so you can pull the needle back out and just dip the cloth in there. Like, you just rock the needle out of the back and dip the cloth in there. In general, it's better to use cloth almost all the time when you're cleaning, as opposed to paper or a paper towel when you're getting inside here. Paper has paper strands, and that means little bits of it. Your airbrush is a very delicate machine when it boils down to it, and it relies on a very tight vacuum. 
Uh, any little bits of paper that get in there could be a problem. So now we're going to do our final stage of the Xenophil highlighting, and for that we're going to use our Game Air Dead White, one of my most favorite colors. Uh, you never brush, well, you, I almost never brush paint using pure white, but when doing this kind of highlighting, I use white quite often because white is very useful when put through an airbrush because you can control its consistency. Um, okay, uh, so. Here we go. We've got our white down there. I do not have a lot. Again, we're going to spray and test. Quick spray and test. Now, this time, we're going to hold the, the, the miniature. I'm going to 90 degrees. He's right from the top of his head. And I'm just going to shoot him here. You'll notice I'm kind of doing the tip of the sword, that kind of thing, because I know I'm going to want that to, to be a slightly different color. So I'm doing this at this high angle. Again, I'm just depressing the trigger and then rocking it back ever so slightly. You just gotta be a little surgeon with your airbrush here, and that's a thing you'll get over time, of like exactly how hard you need to depress any given paint. So now, he's very extreme in his highlight, and you can see there. If I look from the top, it's quite stark white. If I look from the bottom, still gray, right? And if I look at him dead on, what I get is a nice mix. I picked out all that cloth, right? And he's ready to go. So we've primed our bones fig. We've zenithal highlighted our bones fig. He looks very nice, I think. But of course, we're going to turn him into a ghost. Uh, and so for this, I'm actually going to use uh, one of my favorite paints uh, from GW's line, which is the Nilic Oxide, which is a very good ghost color, um, sort of in general. Uh, I like it very much as a, uh, as a color for ghosts. So... What we're going to do next, I'm going to let that dry for just a second here while I talk. I'm just going to spray him there a little bit. Move that along. Okay, so once again, I just blew out two quick cup, or like two quick mini cupfuls. It wasn't even really that full, you know, some amount, a little bit in the bottom there of the cleaner, and then blew it out. Same thing again, good to go. So the idea there being that we're just cleaning it in between color changes. And as you can see, it really wasn't a lengthy process. I didn't spend a lot of time doing that. Uh, so it, it really is and should be considered fast and easy when you're switching between colors on your, uh, on your airbrush. So for our next step, what we're going to do is to get this guy into a ghost. So here is our Nilic Oxide. Okay, now unfortunately GW has decided to use pots, which, you know, makes things like this very annoying. But that's okay, because we're going to use our handy dandy medicine dropper, that if you remember back from Hobby Cheating 01, we're going to pull up a little bit there, right, so we've got a little bit of it in there, and we're going to just drop it straight in our airbrush. We're not going to need a lot, and just put the excess back in here, okay. Set that down for a second, reclose that cap, take my, I have a cup of water next to me, you can't see, but that's what I'm doing, I'm just sucking it up into my medicine dropper to wash that out because we don't want to let paint dry up in there. All right, so then I'm going to take my Nilic Oxide, and I'm just going to add one or two drops of thinner into it. Always, you, you, you almost can't go wrong, you can get paint to a point where it becomes so thin it's just water, it's impossible to use, but it's hard to do. You're probably not going to do that. And I like to keep the paint going through my airbrush pretty thin. So we got our ghost here. And now we're going to turn, well, we've got our Zenithal highlighted spirit. Now we're going to turn him into a ghost. So to do that, I'm just going to get some green flowing through there, test. And here we go. And you can see it doesn't, because I've got it thinned, I have a lot of control over how I'm tinting it. Now for this, I'm shooting it straight at an angle. Right, we're coming in straight away, like dead on to him. And the reason I want to do that is because I want to kind of hit everything equally at this point. Now, when you do this, it's going to knock some of the highlight out. Like, it's going to knock out your high highlights. Right, it'll make that less white, turns the black somewhat green. It's going to move everything together into a middle, to, into a middle area. That's why we can afford to go so extreme on our black to white highlighting, even though that's, you know, certainly that's probably a bit over-highlighted. 
So, there we go. Now he is a ghost. And you can see that we've preserved our, our color change here, or our color, very well. Like, you can still see the darker parts underneath him. And he's ready to go. Just that easy. Now, I don't like this color specifically alone for, uh, as an actual color for ghosts. I think that it doesn't quite capture them appropriately. I'm going to blow out the rest of my nilic oxide here while I'm talking. Uh, it doesn't quite capture it. By the way, always look over your miniature and make sure there's nothing else you need to just touch up. I'm moving a little fast here since I'm recording, probably to my own detriment. That's okay. Okay. Always good to give it the once more stare, just to make sure you're missing. All right, there we go. So now I'm gonna blow out the rest of my nilic oxide. And we've made our ghost. Now one of my problems is this is a very like, it's a very pale green color. And to me, it just doesn't look quite right. Okay? So the next thing I do is I'm gonna take uh, that Waywatcher green you saw me get which is a glaze color. Uh, and I love the glazes through the airbrushes. I think they're fantastic. So that's this guy right here. And once again, we're gonna just shake it up. Just shake it like a Polaroid picture there. And we're gonna go to our medicine dropper again. And we're gonna get out some of that green. And we're gonna put that green down in our airbrush. Now we really don't need a lot of this. So, set that up there, close that. Need to rinse off my medicine dropper real quick here as I lean out of, out, as I lean completely to the side. You can't see that, but it's happening, trust me. All right, so now we've got our Way Watcher Green in there. Yet again, still, quick drop of thinner. Even though this is about as thin as anything gets, these glazes. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to shoot him at this up angle, what was black before. So now I'm at 45 degrees beneath him, okay? And I'm just going to shoot at this low angle to try to catch these things that are recessed and tint them green. I want to leave the high highlights still that same color. But I want to turn the low points this darker green. Because I feel like there's something about the combination of this nilic oxide and this that really just makes it look like that perfect green ghosty energy. Not sure why it is or when I, or when I first tried this, but I just really loved it. The reason we're doing it at the low angle is because we want to leave our highlights still in place. We want them to be that nilic green. So, there we go. I don't know if that color change even comes through at all, but it's there. So now we've tinted him this green. I'm just going to give him another once quick over. Sometimes when you're spraying with these glazes, they're so thin. Even with an airbrush where you can get really good coverage, you've still got to have, you've still got to go over it twice. But if you notice from the top, let's see if I can get like that. Very bright, still very white. From the bottom, very green. And that's what we're aiming at. Because in the middle, that's going to create all our nice mid-tones. Okay. So, final step. We're almost home with this guy. And look at this, we're about to paint a whole fig in not a lot of time. Now, given this is a ghost, so it's kind of cheating. But it's going to serve the purpose. Look at that, we've learned how to prime bones. We've learned about zenithal highlighting. Oh, man, we're doing some stuff. And we've learned ghosty colors. Packing it in here. This could have been three videos, but why would I rip you off like that? That would be crazy. Okay, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to go back to my nilic oxide. All right, I'm just going to take, go back to the nilic oxide. And I'm just going to take one little drop of that. So I only want one little drop inside my airbrush. No big deal. Close that up. Clean out the airbrush, or clean out the medicine dropper. Okay. 
And then we're going to go back to our dead white. Oops, sorry. Back to our dead white. I kind of bump this desk every so often. I hope that's not annoying. And we're going to put in one, two drops of the dead white. Along with, of course, some more thinner. So we're just going to go one, two drops of thinner. And I'm going to mix all that up. Again, just cover the tip. Okay. So now we've got this very nice green white color. Now we're going to go back to the 90 degree angle again. So we're straight at the top of his head here. And I'm just going to spray very lightly. Let me make sure we got a good spray here. Now what I want to focus on is those high highlights. The edges of his robe, the top of his head. This cutaway of his robe over here that's kind of sticking out. As you can see, I'm spraying at an angle to specifically catch these little highlights, right? These pieces that are sticking out. That's the goal. I'm kind of blocking the camera there. I apologize. And there we go. Just that easy. Ghost painted. So, I mean, certainly we could go back in. We could go back in with a brush. We could highlight out with the same color that's in here to catch individual strands if we wanted. And if, you know, we were really serious about this, that's exactly what I'd do. But this is good enough for the tutorial. So, there we go. We covered our priming bones. I would say it looks okay. Works just fine. Um, we covered our zenithal highlighting. And we covered some ghost color. Boy, oh boy. A lot of stuff there. Ooh, there we go. So, there's our little scary, spooky ghost. And uh, he's all set to go. Hope you enjoyed, and uh, we'll continue with some more stuff in the future with more hobby cheating. We'll see you next time.